Hey guys, this is Isaiah from Your Head Software. Today we're talking about Stacks 4 and the five new features we've added to it. This is feature number five, and it's all about externals. Well, it will be about externals, but let's do a micro review of partials first. To understand externals, you need to understand partials. And partials got added back in Stacks 3. So let's just take a quick review of how a partial works. So a partial is actually a partial page. It's a part of your page that you've encapsulated into a reusable component. That way you can use it as many times as you want on your page. And in fact, anywhere in your whole document. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to select this two column stack I have. It has inside of it a markdown stack and an image. I'll click the partial button and I'll give it a name. My partial. And when I click the back button here, you can see that those three three stacks are now encapsulated into a single component. And that component behaves a lot like a regular stack. In fact, it's over here in our stacks library under the partials group. And there it is. It's called my partial, the name that we gave it. And if I drag that into my layout, sure enough, I get another copy of that partial. And that's great because websites are built up of a lot of repetitive content. So we can build that content one time and then reuse it all over our website. And better than that, we can make changes in that one place. Like say you made a typo. You fix that typo inside the partial, gets fixed everywhere in the whole document. So it really reduces your workload. We added that feature three years ago in Stacks 3. And it's been great, except there's been this one huge limitation. And that limitation is that partials really only exist inside of one document. They're, they're saved in that document, in fact. So let's take a look at that limitation. I'm going to show my projects here. And I have another project called 2, conveniently. And here's two, it's an empty project. And if I look inside the partials group, sure enough, it's empty. Even though back here in my one project, the partial still exists. So partials are kind of stuck in one document. In Stacks 4, we decided we needed to break that limitation. And we did that by creating something called externals. And an external is, well, you guessed it, it's an encapsulated component, but it lives external to your website. External to all of your projects, in fact. So let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to unpackage this partial. So it's three separate components again. This time, I'm going to package it as an external. And so now I have this external. I'm going to give it a name, just like I did before. Uh, this time, let's call it flower, since there's a big flower image here. So there's our flower. And we'll click the Back button again. And just like last time, we have an encapsulated component. This time, it appears in the stack group called externals. And there it is, flower. And we can reuse that in our document here, of course. But this time, I'm going to make, I'm going to save those changes inside of this document called one. And I'll even close the document so that nothing is open. We'll open up this project called two. And again, we don't have access to the partials that were in the other document. But in our externals, there is the one that we just created. So if we use it here, 
we get all those same components that we had back in the other document. Even more powerful, we can still make changes. So let's do that. I'm going to open up this partial by double clicking. So now we have those components back. This time I'm going to swap that flower image for this shoes image. I'll put the image on the left side and the mark down on the right. And let's add one thing. Let's see. How about a button? We'll put a button underneath the text. And I, I guess flower is probably not a good name. So let's call it shoes this time. So we'll click back. And there's our newly encapsulated content. Of course, it's here in our externals folder, our externals group. And it has our new name too, shoes. All right, so let's make, let's save these changes to this document called two. And I'll open up the other document called one. Now this document, we had two copies and there's our new name that we gave it, shoes, reflected here as well. But better than that, it has all the new changes that we made. The image is on the left, and it has the new, new button that we added. So you can see that externals are really powerful. It gives us the ability to have these encapsulated reusable components that are completely independent of our projects. We can do that work once for all of our projects and reuse it everywhere. Fix a typo, make a change, even a big change, and it will be reflected in all of our sites. Now, I know if you're like me, you're a pretty cautious person, and you hear about all that power. It's sort of a superpower. And if you were a kid and, and a fan of superheroes, you probably know the old Spider-Man saying, with great power comes great responsibility. And boy, we have that here. We've added a superpower to Stacks. We can make changes to all our documents in one fell swoop. And while that's great, it's also a little bit scary. So we need to be very responsible and use those externals, use that superpower only where we need it. We can use partials still for all of our other content that we reuse inside of a single project. But if we know we're going to, to reuse something everywhere and we want that power to change it everywhere, we can use an external. But if you're like me and a little bit cautious, you want a way to lock that down too. And so we added that as well. And so one last time, let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to unpackage this again. And so now we have uh, four stacks. We have uh, this button stack as well. And instead of packaging as a partial or an external, I'm going to click the templates button. Again, this packages up our content. And this time I'm going to call it shoes final. Because templates, once you've created them, are unchangeable. It's sort of a one shot deal. You package it up when you're all done and you know you don't want to make any further changes. So I'm going to click the back button here. And now we have our final shoes template. Of course, they have their own group in the library. There's shoes final. But better than that, let's open them up in the other document. And I'll show you how that works. We're in our two document here, and I'll get rid of all of the content. 
and here is shoes final. We'll add it to our document. So templates work across multiple documents as well. And it's encapsulated component, but you can't make changes to it. So if I double click on it to try, Stacks gives me a warning and it says you can't edit templates. Now I can convert it to an external or to a partial. And then I could make changes to that copy. But shoes final will exist still. That is something that you can't make changes to. Right, so today we've learned about two new features, externals and templates, and we did a micro review of partials. We've covered all the types of encapsulated components within Stacks. And there's some real powerful stuff there. Now you can use components across all of your projects. And you can even create components that won't change after you've created them. So there's some powerful new features there for you to use for building all of your projects. Now, that's a quick look at feature number five. I hope that you've looked at all five of the feature videos that we've created. Um, it's been fun making these videos and uh, yeah, building up this little set of features for everyone. Come back to this channel. This I'll post these all on YouTube. Um, and I'll also post some uh, super user features so that you can see some of the even more powerful stuff that you can do with Stacks. That's all for now. I hope you enjoy Stacks 4. And uh, thanks for watching.